It is a beautiful day for a walk, so I'm going on a walk. And I want you to come with me. We're going to go down to a local park where I walk quite frequently, very close to me. And we're looking for a particular kind of light today. Something that may have you looking at trees a little differently than you usually do. Oh yeah, and I'm going to do some plein air. Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. I'm here at a local park where I frequently take walks and I'm going on a hunt, a hunt for big game. Big shadows that is. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm in a park that uh, I've been going to for literally years. I mean, just to give you an idea, my two youngest daughters, who are now 27 and 30, we used to take them here when they were little or young to play on the playground and picnic. It's been around for a while. It's probably the closest park to us. On the surface, it's your average urban park. Places to walk, sports fields. But I think the thing I love most about this park are, wait for it, the trees. <laughs> You'd have never guessed that, would you? You know, on first look, the trees here don't seem like anything special, just normal park trees. The biggest collection of trees here are willow oaks, and that's a, a really popular tree that was planted in parks. They grow fast, they grow massive, so they're excellent shade tree, perfect park trees. And there's a ton of them here. You can tell they were planted because of how they're spaced. But I walk here regularly. I come here just sort of as a, a fitness exercise walk. And I've been noticing on sunny days just some really cool shadow patterns on the ground. And you know, you may be saying, Steve, we see shadows on the ground all the time. And from trees, from everything. It's like, it's nothing new. No, it's not. But... Sometimes just something dawns on you and strikes your eye in an artistic way. I love design. I love shape design. I love scenes where I can uh, compose it with really strong contrasts. Now, this is not new to me. I have done this before, but it just sort of is reiterating with me the need to do that. Yeah, so I picked out a couple of spots. First spot was nicely shaded under this big oak. Now what I'm using today is gouache and I'm using my Holbein gouache palette. And you can go quite far with gouache as a transparent medium. What you'll see here is the way I like to use gouache mostly. And that's about 80% transparent, maybe even more than that. You thin it out enough and you get quite a bit of transparency, especially in the darker colors. And then just that other 10 to 20% on highlights and a few of the leaves in the canopy.
I'm taking a lot of license, a lot of artistic license with the placement of the trees because I am making this sort of a design, but I'm utilizing the shadow ideas, the patterns, the characteristics that I'm seeing in real life in my paintings. So I'm gonna do two studies here today, focusing mainly on light and shadow, the big bands of shadow on the ground, highlights that fall on the trunk. To the naked eye, the tr tree trunks appear quite dark. But if you look carefully, you can see some highlights. So I'm going to play those up a little bit. Just look at those amazing ground shadows. It's like once I started looking at them and seeing them, I couldn't unsee them. I just wanted to look at them constantly. The size of the canopies is just awe-inspiring. This is one of my favorite trees in the whole park. That's good for about a dozen paintings at least. Here's where I'm set up for uh, painting number two. And I kind of got threatened out by storm clouds. It actually never ended up raining, but it got real overcast, the light got dark, and it looked like it was gonna rain, so. back in the studio and uh, going to finish primarily the second one. Uh, the first one was pretty well done, I think. Pretty complete. Second one uh, still needed some work. I'm just going to work on these shapes and perhaps almost a graphic design. The placement of the tree trunks and the shapes on the ground and the bands of light. So much fun. I'm really excited about this because it is a process that I can carry anywhere and look at anywhere on almost any subject and work on shape design, contrast, shadow shapes, shadow values. What was a really great challenge here was the interplay of values. The trade-offs I needed, if I make this dark, how dark does this need to be? And not all of that information is given to you on location as you see it in real life. Some of that you have to kind of enhance and interpret yourself. I mean, that's what makes it art, right? And in this case, that's what makes it a study. How am I going to play these values off of each other so it looks convincing, but there's some really interesting value and in shape design. All of these values have shapes. The leaves in the tree that overhang the shadows, the shadows on the ground, the shadows on the tree. They all produce specific shapes, and I just think that's fascinating. All right, well, here's where we ended up. Pretty happy with these studies. And I know these probably don't seem like a whole lot to you, these little simple sketchbook studies. But I'm telling you, they just really packed my mind with information and ideas. As I did this, I kept thinking of more ways I wanted to do this, even some in the same park. And it really got me to thinking about ground shadows, which I haven't done in a while. I just sort of wing that whenever I see them. But I was really focused on it here, and that just felt amazing to me. I love coming back from a situation like this, feeling like I learned something or I experienced something that's going to help me down the road. All right, thanks everyone. Appreciate you watching so much.
Thank you, patrons, for supporting this channel. You are the chief ones to make it happen. You are my sponsors. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.